Who is this? Ken. This is Sadie. Hi everyone, I'm Don Stewart, the artist at ArtistChronicle.com, and today I'm with Ken Hobson, who is going to show us how to paint a leaf with watercolor. Ken has been an illustrator since 1972, and in the early 80s was a senior artist for Walt Disney. Today he lives in Greensboro, North Carolina, and focuses more on fine art. He teaches watercolor at the Greensboro School of Creativity. All right, so what are you going to show us today, Ken? Well, I thought I would show you what I uh, show, I have a lot of my students uh, do when they first start out. A lot of them aren't comfortable with, with watercolors to begin with, and they're all intimidated by the medium, thinking they can't make changes as they go, like you can with uh, oils or acrylics. And uh, so I start out with a simple show, subject like this leaf. And uh, what it does is I crop in on a leaf. Forget the stem, because there's no sense making the negative shapes any larger than you have to. And then I teach them to transfer that sketch on here. Okay. Because it's so easy for students to want to trace it. And I say, don't trace it. Get the proportion as close as you can to that. Then look at the negative shapes as you sketch this in here. Okay. And I don't sketch all the little edges to it. I get the basic structure in here. Uh -huh. And I'll paint the little edges in as I go along. You don't necessarily have to follow the colors of the leaves. You can make it more colorful. But I try to limit them to, say, three colors so it doesn't get too, too colorful and too unbelievable. And so I'm just mixing up uh, some alizarin, crimson, a little bit of ultramarine blue <laughs> to darken it. And I start at the top. And what I do is I try to keep a puddle going all the way down so nothing dries on me. A square brush works kind of nice for, uh, for these leaf shapes, especially if they have a lot of little edges, sharp edges to them. What I like to do, um, like a lot of leaves, they have little holes in them, so I'll leave little areas where I don't, don't oh. paint, I'll leave little gaps. Now I'm going to switch to a sap green with a touch of blue in it, kind of let these things run together. If it's not quite green enough, I'll go just take the green by itself, that's sap green. To tie these colors together so you don't have, it looks like a rainbow of three different colors or whatever, I'll go back up here while it's still wet and drop in, drop in the green. They'll blend together, bleed together really nice. Is he snoring? Mm-hmm. Dog snores. Like here at this point, I'll just interject a little bit of yellow ochre in here. Hmm. Just, just a nice color here. And same, while this is partially soaked in, I can go back up in here and drop these in. It just adds variety, adds texture. I'll go back to my, my green here. Before I forget, let's just keep another little gap down in here. I'm just taking a little burnt sienna now. And just to, just alters the, alters the color a little bit, and now I just I just want to be a little greener now, so I'm just gonna kind of finish off with green probably here. Okay, now while that's still fairly wet, it's starting to dry at the top obviously, so we did that first. But I'm gonna take some clear water, and you'll be interested to see the the technique and effects you get in here. You can see where I splattered clear water on here, mm -hmm. and it's a texture you really you really can't paint, but it's a wonderful way to. Uh, Add detail. I'll tip it to kind of get the color to run up here a little bit if, it, if it's getting too strong. Or I can dab it with a towel. And that's actually not too bad. The watercolor has a tendency, it typically dries lighter than you put down. So you have to kind of force yourself to go a little stronger, more intense with the color than you normally would. Okay, now this is wet. It's starting to soak in. This is a great time to pull the veins out of the leaf. Using a, the tapered end of a, a plastic handle, which is what this is. You learn to start here. Mm. You learn to control. This is a good time to you know, look at it and see if you're losing some of the detail. Some of the clear water I splattered on there may have, it may have been too wet when I splattered on they diffuse too much and they don't give you much of a texture. This is kind of the effect I'm looking for here. This came out nice here. And this is starting to dry up more up here. So let's just take some clear water again. Let's see if we can bring that out again. Here we go, right here. You can see this here. A wonderful 
texture. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of effect that a lot of times some water, watercolors will use. Uh, they'll use salt to get that effect. But that slows up the drying time, and you can get this you can get this wonderful effect just using clear water. So now we'll put the stem on there, and this is where it takes kind of a steady hand. Get a small brush with a nice point on it. Just to add a little interest to it there. Okay, at this point, since everything's still wet, I can't really go any farther with it until I until it dries. And to speed up the drying, I will take a hair dryer. Everything's dry now. Use the hair dryer. And now I'll take a needed eraser and erase the line. That's why I drew uh, it very softly with a 3 h pencil. It erases easily. And that way the lines don't interfere with the paint. At this point, I'm going to throw the shadow in. And then if we have time, we can come back and do a little more detail on it. So what I've got is I've got to figure out a light source. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll have the shadows come this way. So in other words, our light source is coming from up here. So all of our shadows are going to be cast this way. And I'll come in here first and put the shadows in on these little holes. Just like taking that shape and just shifting it. Now that everything's dry, I'm going to take some clear water and splatter it on some areas in here. Now let it soak in for a couple seconds. And then let's see what happens if we push it away. And you get this real fine, sharper detail than we than we got when we sprayed it when it was wet. Beautiful. Wonderful texture. Wonderful texture. And that's, that's basically it. Um, you can take your time in 15, 20 minutes, half hour. You can do something like this. This is beginner. Uh, you can surprise yourself on how well it turns out. And what's nice about a simple shape like this is you're not dealing with a composition where you've got all these other elements involved. It's just getting the eye movement and, and dealing with distance and trees and everything else. A simple shape is a great way to start learning watercolor.